we're going to look at how to determine the shape of a molecule and something that's called molecular geometry, which describes the shape. So remember, if you just look here, this is what a molecule might look like. Um, it is composed of covalent bonds, and we can show those bonds with single, um, a single line to represent a pair of shared electrons. You might see more than one line in a single place to show a double bond or three lines to show a triple bond, but this, um, this line here is a pair of shared electrons or two bonding electrons. One's coming from the nitrogen, one's coming from the hydrogen, and they share those in a covalent bond. So remember that these molecules are mostly going to consist of non-metals um, so that they share electrons and we can show covalent bonds. You might see a couple of metalloids thrown in there too. Um, but how do you know what the shape of the molecule is um, looking at a structure? So simply put, electron pairs, whether they're bonding, like here, or non-bonding, this lone pair we can call it up here, they're going to repel each other. Why is this? So if you have electrons, they're negative, and negative charges repel each other. Opposites attract and like charges repel. So assuming that the electrons are going to repel each other, any type of electron pair is going to be placed as far as possible from each other, which is going to allow us to predict the shape of the molecule, what it's going to look like in the 3D structure. And it's all going to really be based um, around what's on the central atom. So we're always going to be looking at the central atom, the atom in the middle of our structure to determine the shape. Okay, so to determine the shape, we're going to count what's called the number of electron domains. Um, so the electron domains um, are kind of like places you find electrons. So we're looking at how many sides, essentially, does your central atom have? How many places can you find electrons, whether they're in bonds or whether they are as a lone pair? So any non-bonding or lone pair is going to count as one domain, a place you find electrons, essentially. And a bond of any sort, whether it's a single or a double or a triple bond, is going to count as one electron domain. So let's take a look at this example here. Okay, here's my central atom, the atom in the middle, so that's what I'm going to be counting the electron domains around. So let's look at it. There's a lone pair here, so this is one domain. Here's a bond of any type, this happens to be a single bond, that's another domain, two. Okay, um, here's another place where I find a bond of any sort. This just happens to be a double bond, so that's another domain. So, so far we have one, two, three domains. And here's another place where I find a bond of any sort. This happens to be a single bond. It still counts as one domain. So this has one, two, three, four domains. Again, it's kind of like how many sides do you have to this central atom? So this particular one has four domains. If this lone pair was not here, it would have one, two, three three domains, okay? Um, so electron domains is going to help us figure out what's called the molecular geometry. Okay, and again, we do this for the central atom. So to determine the shape, you're first going to count the number of electron domains around that central atom, and then you're going to count how many lone pairs or how many non-bonding electrons you have, and that's going to give us what's called the molecular geometry. We're going to be using this chart, so if you um, take out the chart that you picked up um, for this chapter, I'm going to show it right here, okay, and there's extra copies available on classroom as well. So if you notice here, you can find the number of electron domains. So we said for this last example, there were four domains, so I come down here. And notice it tells me that the overall geometry for anything that has four domains, overall, those domains would be placed tetrahedrally, tetra meaning four. Um, but we can be more specific about the geometry. We can break it down depending if there's zero lone pairs, one lone pair, or two lone pairs around it. So if we go back to our picture, okay, we had four domains, one, two, three, four, and only one of them was a lone pair. So if I go here, four domains, your number of lone pairs I see at the top, okay, four domains, one lone pair. The name of the geometry is trigonal pyramidal. So, it, and if you look at the structure, it kind of looks like the one that's drawn, but it gives us even a little bit more information about it. Um, these bonds are actually kind of almost forming a pyramid, hence the pyramidal, and this lone pair is on top. 
So that's why it's called trigonal pyramidal, or you could say trigonal pyramidal. I don't care how you pronounce it. Um, and these bonds are actually 107 degrees uh, apart. And you can see that this is the actual bond angle. It's a little bit less than the ideal bond angle, which if all of these were bonds instead of a lone pair, uh, it, it would be a little bit larger because this lone pair repels these electrons a little bit more, squishing the bond angles or compressing the bond angles. But you can see kind of all information relating to having um, a trigonal pyramidal geometry. Okay, if instead of having one lone pair there were two, okay, here you, you would see that the name would be bent. Okay, and so you can see kind of a 3D structure of what that might look like. You can see the bond angles. Um, this is something that at some point you might kind of have to memorize certain things about. Um, you would only have to memorize 2, 3, and 4 for this class. You'll see on your chart there's 5 and 6. I, um, you're not going to have to memorize um, those going forward. Uh, but let's just kind of uh, look at some examples. Okay, and also just so you know, in case there's only two atoms present, you just assume that it's linear because the only way you can connect two things is with a line, and so hence it will always be linear. So I want you to take a moment and I want you to try these examples, pause the video, and then you can check your work. Tell me how many domains are around that central atom, and then use that information to figure out the molecular geometry using your chart. Okay, so going over this, this central atom, this is what I'm going to be looking at. There's one, two, three domains around it. Again, a domain is where you're going to find either a lone pair or a bond of any sort. So if there's three domains, and notice all of them are bonds, there are no lone pairs. So there's three domains, no lone pairs. This is called trigonal planar or trigonal planar. Okay, it has 120 degree bond angles, which makes sense because if this were a circle, each of these would be 120 degrees. Okay, so that's this trigonal or trigonal planar. Going across, okay, here's water. There's one, two, three, four domains. Each lone pair counts as one. Each bond of any sort counts as one. So there's four domains on it. And if I notice, there's two lone pairs. So if I go back, four domains, two lone pairs, water is bent. Um, so that's why uh, when we talk about water being polar, uh, it's because of this bent structure. Uh, so that's what gives it its polarity, and we'll have another video about polarity. Uh, this here, nitrogen has one, two, three, four domains, and one of them is a lone pair. Four domains, one lone pair. This is trigonal pyramidal. This here, carbon on the bottom, okay, there's one domain here. This double bond counts as one. A bond of any sort counts as one, and this counts as one. So there's two domains. It's like there's two sides to this carbon. And if I go here, two, it's always going to be linear. There's no way to have um, two domains and one of them being a lone pair. It, can, it couldn't bond them. Okay, and this here, this carbon has one, two, three, four domains. All of them are bonds, so this would be tetrahedral. And this here, this nitrogen has one, two, three domains. Remember, a bond of any sort and lone pairs all count as one. So one, two, three domains. Okay, if I go back, I'll show you three domains, one lone pair. This is actually also bent. So sometimes you might have a structure drawn and it's not showing the geometry. So even though I'm showing this looking like it's linear, looking like it's all in a line, in actuality this is not. So that's why it's important to know these, uh, to be able to figure out what's called the molecular geometry so you have more information about the 3D shapes. And we're going to explore this more in some uh, in a virtual lab, so you can play around with the structures and see more about the 3D, um, the 3D shape.